Hey, what's up, folks? Matthew Bellman, Ryan Kostrowski here with the DFS 5-Pack. Uh, we are ready to break down some overlay NBA. Um, it's good to be back talking basketball with you, young man. It's been a week, a uh, week off for the All-Star break. We also received a one-week ban from YouTube because apparently we won't get into that. I know a bunch of other uh, daily fantasy sports providers have had to deal with the same nonsense. Um, is what it is. Uh, we will announce if there's any changes. Could not have come at a better time, man, as you talked about. So it's okay. We are moving on and uh, excited to talk about this overlay slate because I need to win this jackpot. Right. Like you can tell that this jackpot is something people are going for because before it was up at this total, the peewee jackpot, the two and a half dollar one, was routinely getting more players in on a daily basis. Now that somebody's won that, but the $22 one's got this jackpot of damn near $11,000. It is now, it seems to be getting more players on a daily basis. People want to hit that. I mean, who wouldn't want 11K off a $22 bet? Exactly. So I know that I am one of those person, people who would want that. So let's try to, to let's try to dive into this slate and, and pick our favorites, man. I also want it. So uh, it is, that would be nice. I mean, going 12 and 0 is not easy, but winning GPPs on any kind of pay side or anything like that, none of this is going to be easy. There's a reason the payday is so big. Exactly. All right. Also, if you go 0 and 12, I mean, there's 500 bucks for you. That is a new kind of uh, another version of the Slump Buster Challenge, if you want to call it that. Mm -hmm. All right. James Harden versus Giannis Antetokounmpo. This is a good one. I usually I know both of us try to avoid picking studs or picking against studs because both Giannis and Harden are amazing and go off at any point. Uh, I like the idea of Giannis because he doesn't have to deal with uh you know, being cold on his jump shot and stuff like that. But I like the spot a little bit better for Harden. I worry about Detroit competing in this one competitive. So I think gun to head, I would pick James Harden here. I'm not going to pick it because of all the reasons you said, and I completely agree with your breakdown. I like Giannis more in the sense that he can do things besides shoot. I mean, that's not where his point lines come from at all. I mean, that's something he's added to his game, but that's like the – sixth or seventh like part of his game Harden that's like his number one so that's my big worry here it's why I won't pick it but I like the spot for Harden a lot better as well so I think if gone to head I might pick Giannis though crazy enough if you feel he, like for people watching this that Detroit plays hard tonight and this game is somewhat competitive then I think you definitely go with Giannis right here for all the things that you kind of said that what he's capable of doing I just have no clue what to make of Detroit right now it's a brand new team. They don't even have Reggie Jackson anymore. I know you from your sports betting angle, oftentimes you like teams that uh, are a little shorthanded sometimes. It doesn't have any of their stars. But at this point, they got nothing. So I just have no clue what to make of them. Same. And the other thing is, like, on a site like this, you get negative points for missed shots. So that's big here. Like, on a pace, on the pace sites, I like Harden more than Giannis. Here it's really close. The missed shots affects it a little bit because – at the end of the day, if Giannis shot 12 for 17 and Harden was 12 for 38, I wouldn't be surprised at all. It's funny. We weren't far off. I was going to say Giannis goes 11 of 18 and Harden goes 11 of 34. So we're thinking along the same lines. Uh, that's just the nature of these two guys. Giannis does everything. Harden's really just a score. You know what I mean? That's just it's his forte. He's not a terrible passer, but he's not a good passer. He just he's happens to have the ball in his hand a lot. He's a prolific scorer, like one of the best scorers of all time. Ever. Yeah. No doubt about it. So, okay. Uh, we're pretty close on this one, and I think the one thing we can definitely agree on is neither one of us really wants to pick it. Yep. The next one, though, Westbrook versus Trey Young. I don't love picking against Trey Young, but I like this spot for Westbrook. Give me Russ. Yeah, it's hard not to like Westbrook over Trey Young here, so I'll agree with you. Okay. Moving down from there, we're going to move over to the uh, Brooklyn versus Philly game. Uh, not that I really want to pick against Ben Simmons, but give me Joel Embiid today. I struggle to see anyone picking Ben Simmons here in this one, if this is one you want to, like, you know, potentially be different on. Because there is a reason why this is a matchup, and there is a reason why Simmons is more expensive on pace size. I'm not saying that I will choose Simmons here or that I will spend more for him on pace sites, but there, there are reasons. I'll go with Embiid, but I don't think someone is like crazy to pick Simmons. No. So Simmons is more expensive on DK today. But let's remember this, that the last game before the All-Star break, they went double overtime. And Simmons can run for 45 minutes, which I think he did last game. Embiid can't. So Simmons got a price up and he had an excellent game. But he had, I believe, 
several more minutes than Embiid in that game. So that's kind of helped his pay increase right there. It doesn't really matter right here, but for pay sites, it's a little bit of the difference today. For sure. All right, moving down from there, Chris Middleton versus John Collins. I mean, I don't love the spot for Collins, and I wouldn't be leaning on him on pay sites. Uh, but I think here I'd probably pick him over Middleton. I just have more confidence in that being a game. Isn't this Middleton revenge? Am I wrong there? <laughs> yeah, no. you are wrong. I, I uh, Sorry. I, I'm with you, though, just in that Collins. I, I like more with Giannis playing in a game that might not stay close. I like Collins more also. All right, so we agree on that. Uh, then this classic one that we get a lot, Jimmy Buckets Butler versus Bam out of Bayou. It's a tough call, but I'll go Bam today on this one. Again, Butler is a guy, as one of the, the actual main alphas in the NBA. We like him sometimes in harder matchups. When he's playing against a tough team, he takes over. Against bad teams, which Atlanta clearly is, Bam, who just stuffs the stat sheet in every category, just will walk out there and do his thing today. I think they both probably walk into DFS points. So For sure. I'm not like excited about picking it, but I agree with you. I like Bam more slightly. Yeah, I think we, we get this question a lot on this site, and I think that we typically end up with the same answer. If Miami was going up against Philadelphia today, we would probably want Jimmy Butler. But knowing that they're against a terrible Atlanta team, Bam will just do what he does every single day, get you a little bit of everything. Cool. All right, next up, Dragic versus uh, Herter. Um, I mean, I'll take Dragic, but it's close. Yeah, uh, it's like it's like by default you gotta like the Miami side more than the Atlanta side, you know? Like that's just what it is. that's all it is. All right, Atlanta is a crush spot. Miami's a dead spot. Not saying that Herter couldn't outscore Dragic today, but gun to head, we're gonna go with the guy in a crush spot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Next up, we got Miles Bridges versus Terry Rozier. Uh, if my memory serves me correctly, Mr. Bridges won the MVP of the Rising Star game. So I'll let him piggyback off of that. I also like a guy who does a little bit more damage at the basket like he does for, as opposed to Rozier in this situation. Man, this is another tough one. Like, I don't know why I just have a gut feel Rozier, so that's where I'm going to go. Okay. Uh, Karis LeVert, uh, no Kyrie Irving versus Tobias Harris. This is definitely another spot where the matchup is better for Harris, but Philly all of a sudden got deep with guys that can shoot three-pointers. So not saying that I like Harris better here, but I am really considering Karis LeVert in this spot. I like LeVert more. more, Much more needed. Yes, much more needed. All right. Joe Harris versus Al Horford. Uh, I'll take Al Horford. Big men against Brooklyn. I'll take Al Horford also, but Joe Harris has been playing well. Yes, uh, we like Joe Harris too, but uh, I'll take Al Horford here. So then we get ourselves into an interesting question. Korkmaz versus Richardson. Korkmaz has had some real moments lately. Now, I'm still going to default to Richardson, but not as easy as this would have seemed a month ago. I think this is kind of easy. I'm going to roll Richardson for sure. So Richardson's on the up and up after finally you know, coming back, playing 30-plus minutes. Korkmaz is not on the up and up with Richardson getting healthy, them getting Burks, Robinson. I'm going to give me Richardson here. I'm, I'm not going to be shocked if Korkmaz outscores him, but this might be my number one. All right. I don't know if it'll be my number one, but I'm with you in the in the aspect that I'll pick it, and I will pick Richardson. It'll be in my top 12. Where in the top 12 is yet to be determined. Cool. All right. J-Val versus Morant. Give me J-Val. They just don't really have a lot Sacramento down low right now with Holmes and Bagley still out. So I don't love it. Uh, I like Morant more most days, but I will pick Valachunas in this spot. I will too. I will too. All right. Uh, Triple J, Jaron Jackson Jr., uh, same game, different ends uh, versus, uh, oh, I can't think of how to pronounce it, Bielisa. I cannot think of how to pronounce his first name right now. Uh, who do you like here? Oh God, this is another like I, this is a wild card for me. I could see each one of these guys destroying the other. Do you agree? Sure. Absolutely. Um, so I'm gonna go with Jaron Jackson, but there's no. I mean, I, I just I feel like I just lean on him more than Bielitsa. I never trust Bielitsa. I don't trust Bielitsa either, but I am gonna pick him here uh, for a point that you make a lot of times. He's just more needed for his team right now with no Bagley or Holmes. No doubt about it. All right. Uh, same game. 
Let's go back over to Memphis. We got Clark taking on your boy, Dylan Brooks. So Brooks had a little bit of a rough go of it to end the first half. I think that week off to clear his head is what he needed. Now, I don't like the fact that he's a big-time jump shooter in this spot, but I am going to go with Dylan Brooks in a bounce back game. Same. Okay. Uh, man, they are pounding this game tonight. Harrison Barnes yep. versus Bogdan McDonovich. Uh, I'm going to go with Harrison Barnes. Again, he is needed in this spot. They are still really beat up in the front court. Um, I'll take Harrison Barnes. Same. All right. Miami and Atlanta. Let's pivot back to there. Jay Crowder versus uh, Mr. Nunn himself. Crowder versus Nunn. Give me Nunn. I know he's going to play bigger minutes. Do we? I like Crowder, I think. Uh, just that I think he's – I'm not going to be surprised if Nunn – he's not out of the rotation, but if he starts not playing as big a minutes. Uh, he's just not as needed as much. I'm not sure. I don't love it, but I lean Crowder. See, and with no hero, I think they need uh, they need a guard. You know what I mean? Like, it's just Dragic. You know, Butler's kind of that combo guard forward. So I think Nunn continues to play pretty good minutes. Um, whereas at the forward spot, you know, they got Robinson, Crowder, Iguodala. Now, I could definitely be wrong. Would be they the first or the last time. Play big minutes. What's up? They probably both play big minutes, but I agree with your points after hearing that. So that's just my thoughts. It could go either way. It probably comes down to who makes their three-pointers tonight. As it all often does. All right. Andrew Wiggins versus Devontae Graham. Uh, I'll take Wiggins. And even though I'm a bigger fan of Graham than I am of Wiggins, I like a guy who maximizes his talent like Graham versus a guy like Wiggins who wastes it. But in this spot, for it's Wiggins for me, and it's not really even that close. Yeah, this is a top three for me for sure. Give me Wiggins all day. All right, moving down to Buddy Buckets, three-point champion, clutch shot, makes the last one to beat out Devin Booker, who I was cheering for. I was so happy watching the three-point shootout to see our boys Devin Booker and Bertans, but then your boy healed. Made it to win it. So uh, interesting one right here. I'm thinking you're going to go Draymond, though, today, and I'm going to be with you on that. I am going to go Draymond here. I'm a bigger Heels fan than Draymond in general, but I like this spot for Golden State a lot more. Um, that Sacramento game has a lot of wild cards to it. Buddy Heel being one of them, but I just like Draymond more. All right. Eric Bledsoe versus Christian Wood. Uh, give me Wood. You got Milwaukee at full strength right now. I think Giannis does his thing tonight, and Bledsoe just isn't quite as needed. Uh, Detroit, meanwhile, rocking all of the former Milwaukee big men in Wood, uh, Henson, and Thon Maker. Like, they have every incentive. Close game, blowout to keep playing Wood. Uh, he should rattle into enough DFS points just by being out there. Agree wholeheartedly. Um, I agree. I like Wood, and I'll probably see Ron in any type of game script here. Yeah, George Hill's back tonight, too. Not that he's going to completely eat into Eric Bledsoe, but he should get his time out in the court and everything like that. Uh, definitely give me Christian Wood right here. All right, going back down to Milwaukee again with Brooke Lopez uh, versus Robert Covington. Here's another one. I will absolutely pick this one. Give me Robert Covington all day in this spot. Oh, yeah, definitely, Rocco. I mean, you brought it up with Marvin Williams, but just the fact that they're at full strength, like definitely give me Covington here in a game I like a lot more. Brooke Lopez is going to be needed come playoff time, and he's going to be needed to play bigger minutes. I think you watch Milwaukee with the addition of Marvin Williams. Uh, be very cognizant in blowouty type of games like this, how many minutes are given Brooke Lopez. Uh, he is a little bit of an older player. Uh, they got other big guys, including his brother, Ursan, Marvin Williams now that can run some of this time. This game could easily be a blowout. I, I like Rocco a lot here. For sure, same. All right, Thaddeus Young versus Malik Monk. Even though I feel like Malik Monk, is going to see more consistent minutes in the second half of the season. I'll take Thad Young here all day long. Same. Just big men. For, you want the big men in this game. Thad Young's a big man. It's going to take Malik Monk getting hot for him to, you know, outscore Young here. And he could do that. But I trust Young a lot more. So I, I like that one quite a bit. Definitely. Now, Monk's got some GPP type of appeal. But I'll bet on the floor of Thad E.S. Young here. And this is another one. I will pick this one with 100%. Uh, certainty it'll be in my top 12. Yeah, I mean, it, yes, I agree. It's the the problem is like you mentioned it with Monk's GPP upside. Like if all of a sudden he comes in the game and he hits like three threes, like Young's not catch, catching him if he starts shooting like that, you know? Yeah, it's definitely possible, but all these questions have ways that their guy could lose, right? I mean, I'd go 0-12 sure. and take that 500 bucks if I could, but it just isn't that easy. For sure, I'm with you. I wish I was good enough to go in 12. I'd pull in that 500 bucks every day. 
yeah, I mean, it'd be that'd be nice. Not to collect <laughs> K, but it'd be nice. Yeah, exactly. All right, guys, that's what we got for today. Uh, the link to Overlay, I got their Twitter profile below. Um, we're going to be cognizant of what kind of links that we share because I think that is one of the issues with YouTube right now. Um, you know, whatever. Nothing we can do about it at this point. So uh, go to their Twitter profile. The website link is right there. Go follow them. Uh, let's go win that money tonight. Let's get it, guys.